Um, what does this mean to the people of Caborca? And you took the Suchitotus down. Yeah, this, this is the second time that uh, Cheryl and Lifeline have donated an ambulance to one of our sister cities. The first one went to Suchitoto in 2010, and this one is going to our sister city of 40 years, Caborca, uh, shortly after their election next in the next week or so. Okay. Uh, the same two drivers are going to take it down, uh, Bill McKella and I, uh, and uh, present it to the new mayor of Caborca. Uh, as, as we know, uh, the people of Caborca operate on, on their, emer their emergency system works pretty much on a shoestring. And so this will be a welcome addition to their emergency fleet. So they've got some worn out uh, ambulances that have been donated to them over the years. And while this one is, is not a brand new ambulance, it will be for them. And so uh, they'll be taking advantage of, of the new equipment for them. And uh, they are already expressing their great deep appreciation to Lifeline and uh, the support that the Sister Cities has gotten in helping to make this happen for them. Um, since you're one of the <coughs> folks who drove down the ambulance to Suchitoto, um, which is probably one of the adventures of a lifetime, it sounded yes. like. <laughs> um, have you heard how has that been helpful to that community since then? The city of Suchitoto did not have an ambulance. They had no emergency vehicles. So obviously it was a big addition to their medical team down there. Uh, there's no hospital in Suchitoto. There's a small clinic. And so this was their primary emergency vehicle, and still is, after almost two years. Uh, ambulance that was donated by Lifeline is their emergency medical vehicle. Uh, it's been in use. Uh, they have a medical team that has been trained in the capital of San Salvador, and they are stationed up in Suchitoto. Uh, coincidentally, the first patient in that ambulance was the mayor's father. The mayor of Suchitoto's father had a cardiac situation, and they had to take him down to San Salvador to the uh, big hospital in the capital city. And it was just coincidental that it happened to be the mayor's father. Otherwise, he would have been put in the back of a pickup truck or on the back seat of a, a, a sedan and driven two and a half hours to the hospital. This enabled him to be there in about 50 minutes uh, in the comfort of the ambulance. So, uh, yes, they're using it. They're still thrilled with it and, uh, and uh, are most appreciative. Okay, and I understand a second ambulance is being donated um, this There's month also. There's another one being uh, donated by Cheryl and Lifeline uh, this week. It will be going, it's being given to the city of Prescott, who is donating it to uh, the city of uh, Puerto Penasco, Rocky Point, to be placed out at the International Airport in Rocky Point to provide uh, emergency service for the highway from Caborca to uh, Rocky Point. So it's about 20 miles east of town, out near the Mayan Palace uh, Hotel. And so it, it will be out east of uh, Rocky Point and provide emergency services for that section of the highway between Rocky Point and Caborca, much as a previously donated ambulance is on the route, route between Rocky Point and Senoita uh, to cover that 60 miles of, of highway there in case of accidents or emergencies. So it's been very generous of Cheryl and, and the uh, Lifeline people uh, to help these people in need. And it's an example of international relations at its finest. So Cheryl. Cheryl, a few comments from you, please. We're just thrilled that they're gonna, our equipment's going to continue on and save lives and uh, be a, uh, well appreciated and uh, be able to make a big impact in these communities. Okay. Mayor, since you're one of the ones to help facilitate all this, a few comments from you, please. Well, I could only add on to what Bob has said, that uh, uh, this project started three or four years ago. Uh, conversations with Cheryl and uh, a year and a half ago she came forward with two vehicles that are in use on a daily basis and providing a service uh, even though these vehicles uh, they're they're well kept they look like new uh, they're not new and uh, so Cheryl is keeping uh, keeping up with the, the, the trend of uh, providing excellent service to our communities here uh, it gives her the opportunity to take older equipment and still let it provide a service. So uh, we're very thankful. The community is thankful. And, uh, and just uh, keep it up. There's always a need <laughs> yeah. in, uh, in other places. Okay. Did you want to? I think they've summed everything up, up 
perfectly. Or I can add that they haven't said thank you. Okay. Well, let me su just suggest that this wouldn't have taken place had it not been for the mayor's involvement and certainly Glenn, the chief operating officer here at Lifeline. Mm -hmm. uh, they have both been instrumental in seeing that this, this happened, of course, with the blessing of Cheryl and, uh, and the executives here at, at uh, Lifeline. So we're appreciative to all of you uh, for helping us uh, with this project. And what about you folks? I mean, you're the ones yeah, who drive okay. it all the time. Uh, you know, are you, are you glad to see <laughs> that your vehicles are still being used and still helping people? That's <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a great uh, opportunity for, to help other people, um, especially in, down in Mexico with this equipment. I mean, they can use a great ambulance for, to help save lives. And, just a brief note with these Econo lines, I've just seen them go the distance. And my dad back in Ohio works on the Econo lines at Ford, and uh, one of them actually went 900,000 miles. And the president said, uh, if it goes to a million, we'll give you a brand new one and put that one on showcase. So just to say, in short, that these last a long time, and I mean, we run out of them when our vehicles are being serviced, and they're good ambulances. What what suggestions do you have to the folks that will be using them in, in these other countries? I would say, um, like the executives here, they encourage us to maintain our equipment and um, just to do a good job and be good stewards of what we've been given. And um, So I'll just pass that on along. That way they can keep it running as long as they can.